Welcome back, friends. Last guy, it's time for more Phoenix Wright 2. March 23rd, 2.35 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Is it the finale, or are we really close? Let's find out. The me is there. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Yeah, yes, your honor. Y yes, your honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? Hey, that is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It, it looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Y yes Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. Holy shit! What? What do you mean, Miss Edgeworth? This, this note was not written by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. Yeah, that's a bombshell. Order, order, order. Miss Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do more detailed analysis. However, it appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Carida. M Mr. Carida? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left a suicide note after all. He never wrote anything about on guard. However... Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ungard could not have known that until the facts remain unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. The theory that Ungard had on no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Well, if you think there's something wrong, present evidence. The defense believes that the theory the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Ungar to not have known it was a fake. What is this little item called again? Um, a video camera, Your Honor? Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right, a camera. Ah, oh, you kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Miss Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Ungard knew of the existence of this note. Because he was spying on the victim, isn't that right? Hmm? If that were true... Then this means Mr. Ungard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Huh? So then the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ungard's motive was for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared with, into thin air. But Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ungard monitored Mr. Kadita 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forger at an unknown place? Mm hmm. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, it looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Mm hmm. As I figured. Huh? As you figured. As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? The prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungar's motives through the evidence. I must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. 
Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call on the witness to the stand at this time. There it is! Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Edgar stuttering? This is not like him at all. Unusual? But what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? The witness is the one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of... Who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder? That's impossible! Who in the... No such person exists who can answer the question with such certainty. There is... Y yes, Miss Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... It's, um... Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley the Killer. Oh, show! Oh. <laughs> is it the parrot? How are we gonna get Shelley the Killer? Oh, Mr. The Killer. Uh, wait! Shelly the Killer? I didn't think we were gonna have Shelly, I thought we were gonna get Mr. Unguard up here. Oh, you mean the Killer? Hmm. I mean the assassin? Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a matter of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance. I'll ask for your permission. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Knight. Y yes? Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well, then. The prosecution calls our witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way to left to us? Now then, witness. Um, your name and your occupation, please. They got the radio frequency for Shelly to kill her? How? He's on the run! How did it... This... <clears throat> I need... I need comments right now. Which one is re more ridiculous? The parrot? Or freaking this? Parrot or this? I don't know. I didn't think you could top the parrot. I don't, I... Holy crap! Very good, sir. My name is Shelly the Killer, and I'm a professional assassin. I... I say... What is going on here? Your Honor? How can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. The Killer will testify to this court. How did they even get it? So this must be what that urgent call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this would not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. The Killer himself. Witness, please present some sort of evidence that you are in fact Shelly The Killer. I understand. Please wait a second. I'm so hungry. Uh, Maya! Maya? Uh, a voice. Mr. Light, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objection to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have no too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There's one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Carrera. Is this correct? 
Uh, it is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Karida. Uh, now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. A bad dream. Jelly the Killer. What is he going to say? About my client. There's something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the truest truth, trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Okay. Hmm, Mr. The Killer seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. The Killer is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about his trust between his client and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Knight, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected. Phoenix. Hmm, press. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please tell us your clients... your clients... I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? Hmm. D sorry, uh, go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. That's only because you don't know about my situation. The trust between you and your client. I prove my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the particular name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before. But if it ever did? Y yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly. Th that's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypo hypo It was only a hypothetical anyway. I've done like three voices for this guy in the last two minutes. Uh, that seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of the prescribed rule. The rule? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You... Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? The gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but would you care to die? Uh, no, no, I, uh, didn't say anything. Uh, <laughs> the judge had better watch himself. We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, that is an egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow that coming from an assassin makes it less than comfortable. Comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff, just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close. Close. You're going to have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. I'm not his therapist, you know. We have to present evidence at some point. The card?
Nej, det kan jag... Your Honor, what do you think of... Uh, no, that's not it. Do I just keep pressing? Let's just keep pressing, though. Let's try pressing again, I guess. I don't know. We already let him give a spiel. We already did, so what's going on? Oh, okay, there it is. We have to have him say this part again. All right. We have to have him say this part a second time. All right. Press. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. These are the rules and duties an assassin is client to carry out. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules? A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand the assigned rule. Guess my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? If he's willing to give up Maya, he could just... I mean, if he's willing to give up his client, then he can give up Maya too, right? This case just gets better and better. Just keeps getting better and better. You can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. Okay, we already had this part. Okay, come on. Now then, I do believe it's about time I reviewed the name of my client. Don't you agree? What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Knight, then I will... Witness? What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Carida? That person's name is... Ah. Uh. Hmm? Hmm. Adrian Andrews. What? Witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier! Huh? Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Agent Andrews! What? What? This can't be on the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. DeKiller just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court. Mr. DeKiller told him a different name. Not on guard, perhaps. I knew it. This, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you are the one who summoned this witness. Uh, uh, you, you, Shelly the Killer. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt on guard. Am I correct? All I wish is to, to do is help procure his acquittal. I'm not getting the voice again. Mm. Mm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided the suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility that the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. The Killer's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matangard is innocent! Ah. Jelly the Killer, I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. 
Please continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Beep. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Matt and Guard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But an Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And on guard. My client! I know he's guilty! Can I live with myself if I win this? Can I live with myself if I let Maya die either? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Now that the killer is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me! Listen, everyone, please! A testimony just now, it was all one big lie. Miss Andrews! The suicide note may have been a fake. But, that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. At Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. The testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But, Mr. De Killer himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and the button donning the Nickel Samurai's costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. We know that Mr. Last Impact was a large part of your life. I'm losing his voice, hold on. You wanted to follow here. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reason to want them both dead. I... no! Mr. Wright! Hmm? You... you know the truth. Tell them! Tell them the real story, who the real killer is. Tell them! Please, help me. Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Knight? Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. Ah, uh, I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and, get, uh, and wait for Gumshi's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Across the trial continue. Phoenix. I can't do it, my Aunt Mia. I can't accept I'm not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know. But, but Matt and Guard is a killer. A murderer. I can't. I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I am no better than on guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact. That is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Hmm? Yes, you do. I trust him to try to fudge me over. Mr. Knight, your opinion, please. The defense requests that. We be allowed to further question Mr. De Killer. Uh, am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Knight? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through this witness's lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. Hmm. Not to get a not guilty, it's to get the truth. Because I'm that guy. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. Tequila. Right away, Your Honor. Has a verdict been reached? And before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? They should trace him now. 
All you needed from me, uh, all you needed from me, the, the killer, is the name of my client. What else could you need from me? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about? Usually done. But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. The Killer, you don't mind. Please testify about the client in more detail. Your legal people and your procedures. It isn't... Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? They're playing on his ignorance of courts. On his ignorance of court. That's what they're playing on now. So he can keep talking so they can trace him. At this point, they need to trace him. He already broke the trust. As I've already stated, quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client, however. One thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime. By pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events. For the, um, fifth time now? However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Objection! Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Miss Edgeworth. We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need the question testimony like this, do you, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Your Honor, the defense will question the witness, as if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes the two of us. I don't even know anymore. I quit. Kickball is what I want. Okay, new recess. Okay. Hmm. What is it, Mr. Knight? I pressed him the wrong way. It might raise suspicions on his end. But I had to do something to waste more time. Um, witness. By requesting a hit. Yes? How much is your fee? Uh I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. Ah! No, 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 I'm not, I'm not thinking of hiring M M Mr. Knight. Y yes y y You... You want to kill me? You wanted me dead, don't you? What? Why would you think something like that, Your Honor? Guilty! Mr. Phoenix writes, you are here like a clear guilty! Edge, witness, let's continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your client, are they not? Holy crap! Holy crap! For those watching, someone just entered the chat seeing that part and freaking out like, what? I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to, another, uh, another to kill. But if I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. Ah, uh, yeah, well, changing occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. Dekilla. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt. On their shoulders. However, my client this time thought they could run away from their guilt. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card! So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. 
We try to make things easy. My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife. And even hide my card from sight. That is something I cannot overlook. Hmm, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not, or not without him being here. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually most people try to create an alibi for themselves. You should use my services, Mr. Attorney. I would suggest you plan for an alibi too. Ah, no, I already told you, I have no intention of ever using your services. Mm. <laughs> the judge is not sure. Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one who on trial here? Agent Andrews already knew. Uh, from the very beginning. That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. Hmm? So why do you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. Why would someone who has requested a murder go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. Edgeworth. If that's the case, then why- Edge- I- Ungod. Then why didn't the person just request that you do it? Deadly, that is not possible. Huh? My job is to kill, that is all, and to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame, and protect them is my duty. Hmm. Even they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall. And that's all you have to testify? Yes, and I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? As in you plan to continue? I must as I have yet to find a person to take my place and become the fourth successor. Actually, how would you like a new life, Mr. Attorney? Excuse me? Ah, no, 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 I'm fine, really. Are you really now? <laughs> I wonder what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do now, Phoenix? All I can do now is expose the lies. That's true, however, you realize that you... will be very bad for our client, right? Ugh, I'm so confused. But the one thing I know for sure is I can't let this trial end yet. Okay, let's try this. There it is, the wine glass. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea that Juan Carrito had been murdered. But how do, you, how do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass? This is a killer's supposed client thought Mr. Carita had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thoughts just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Hey, isn't it a waste of time to ask such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Kanita's death. If not, 
Then can then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. But uh, how strange. Yes. Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Ah! Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, uh, sorry. Mm. That, that sounded like an awfully weak objection to me. Anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Ugh, very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here. I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. I'm very sure Edgeworth is tracing the call right now. That's what I'm thinking. All right, let's get going back to this. Request taking. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss the f and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I tr believe I have made no mistakes. All right. We have anything for that? Hmm. So you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Light, your cross-examination, please. Request taken. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. Uh, one week ago? Are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop! In any case, my client at this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? Did you ask why that specific night? No. I tried to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I, uh, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Press further. So what are these suspicions you, what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Juan Carita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about the bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought... What the hell? Is this tooth out? Never noticed. Naturally, the victim brought it with him in his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where the bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Light, was the testimony just now of any importance? It is very important. The testimony just now has made one thing clear. And that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Light, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. Whoops. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Uh, of course I did. What was that? What was with the brief pause? Press further. Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my, meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. 
and the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Knight, was the testimony just now of any importance? It was very important. Of course, it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. the Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he's mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Agent Andrews? Ah, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Mm hmm. I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Now then, would the witness please continue? They're tracing him, right? So your client was Adrian Andrews. And if that is correct? Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Mm hmm? Well, there wasn't. There doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, don't you? But you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about delicate balance. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I'm quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. Okay, okay, crap. I'm at a loss right now. Let's press this again. Press this again. Oh, this part! It was not important. What the killer said sounds plausible, but in the end, it's just his conjecture. No, Your Honor. I don't think it's very important. Hmm. Very well then. But this please continue. Okay. Let's say not important. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop, step, stop sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. That's when I thought, I can trust this person as a client. Hmm, it's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Uh, yeah, he said him. It was very important. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Huh? Really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Hmm, very well. From the moment I saw him, I thought I can trust this person as a client. Uh, Adrian Andrews has... Uh, she's a lady. Not a, not a him. We're not talking about gender fluid here right now. But as we know, now know, that was not how it turned out, correct? What do you mean? Agent Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes. I suppose you are correct. Hmm. I would like to check one last time. Are you sure your testimony is correct? There we go. How are we not making him suspicious by doing this is my question, right? We got a problem. She's not a him. I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. That's when you thought he was trustworthy? How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. Uh, what? Shelly the Killer. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Uh, why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip off. About her. So what is the issue? Uh, oh, what, what did you say just now? About her. If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, 
one would have told you that she was a woman. So does he just not know that Adrian? Has he never known about Madame Guard's assistant? I guess he didn't do the re he didn't do the homework. He didn't do the homework. Oh ho! Wait, did we just break the radio? Order! Order in the court! Mr. Knight, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following. That he always meets face to face with his clients when he ta when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. the Killer's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Uh, uh. That's a lot of oil coming out. That's weird. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why was it Phoenix doing it, not Edgeworth saying this one? Why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous name. Hmm, yes I see. Unluckily for Mr. The Killer, the entire time he was on the stand and no one had stated Miss Andrews, Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. I've never met a male Adrian, I would have thought female because of Rocky. Adrian! Adrian! What? What? What is going on? Shelly the Killer! This court demands an explanation. Um... I, I think somehow I must have mixed up this client and another. But does that mean you remember something different now? Y yes of course. But please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ah, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. You know, if people stop trying to frame other people, this would work out better for them, I think. Request taking part two. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Carita, two or three other things, and two or three other things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. He just said earlier he doesn't do by mail. Hmm, so he took his, this job with a, with a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. Which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. You break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know, I can't make him suspicious. But, I think we're okay, like, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. He's having a hard time right now, considering he's never beaten us in a case. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. From what I can tell, Phoenix could have won this thing if, you know, on guard didn't meddle. Yes, now I remember, I took the request by mail. You never take requests by mail, though. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come on now. Let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess! Mr. Knight, you can't badger witness with such harsh words. Um... You're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. Killen met with his client? Don't we have proof? I have proof. We've come this far, I have to try to prove something here. Very well, I will show you a proof. Are you sure about this, Phoenix? Here's the proof that the witness met with his client, who wished Mr. Cardita dead. The bear! So, what do you think? Uh, you may say, what do you think? However, I am, for all intents and purposes, a transceiver radio. Oh, that's right. You can't actually see the evidence. Well, I don't think this was one I needed to see. I can hear the pure silence in the air there. Balls. Ah, how can I have picked the wrong piece of evidence at a time like this? 
Hmm, in any case, let's continue with the testimony. Is there proof? Oh, the card! How else would they get the card? Right? No. No, they hid the card. Okay, no. Mm. Maybe there is no evidence. Yeah, okay, I don't have any proof. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Hmm, I see. And your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Deadly for us, Your Honor. That is the nature of right and wrong. Balls. Alright. Yo, Zuchi. And why could you not meet certain clients? Recently, I've been receiving more requests. If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities? On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times and now take requests via electric and electronic mail. Electronic mail? Do you have a mail to mail that in a special insulated envelope? Ah, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I meant by electronic mail is that it is what is commonly referred to as email. Email? In a contest of mimicry, the Ed judge would beat a parrot, hands down. Ahem. Anyway, so you took his, this job without having met your client and... Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? Or it'd be really bad if I push his buttons in the wrong way and get he gets mad. You gotta try, push further. Whether or not they're related to this case or not, or this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney? Yeah, yes everything I've said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue this cross-examination. Ah! Uh, could it be... That you are planning to betray your own client? Th that's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one? Whoa, whoa, wait! Uh-oh, this is looking really bad! I shouldn't press my luck. Any? All right, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Do it! Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. Uh, if it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine? The bear figurine? After that assassination of the target, I was to find that figure. I was told that this job was just as important as the ki actual killing. And where was that figure? It was inside Mr. Kirita's suitcase. And then what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. One of these was to find the bear figure and give it to Adrian and Andrews. I found this figurine at Mr. Angard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Angard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Knight, do you have any problems with this piece of evidence? This testimony? There's a contradiction. So the killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. But I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here, he will cut the connection in, on his end. We want to make a strong point, Phoenix. You have to present strong evidence. He's right. But now that Miss... What, Dr. Wright? Present evidence. Think it over again. We'll see. No use. As long as I can't put my finger on the central problem here, Pressing this witness any more would be extremely dangerous. Hmm, it appears that Mr. Knight has no problems. Well then, witness, please continue. Go back, okay. 
Witness, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine. And she told you to take the bear and wait for her at, at Unguard Mansion? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. What? Mm hmm? This is a battle of wits. I can't let him up. Let up on him. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been recipient of this bear. Why? Kill the killer. If he had really given the bear to Miss Andrews. Then this item should not have been inside it. This item? I see where you're going. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it for her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note and burned it. Or was it just a radio there? Order! 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 So that's where you two are going. So by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the, the puzzle. Which means... It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian to be, oh, Andrews to be the client. I lost the voice, by the way. Oh ho! <laughs> oh, order, order, order! Hmm, Mr. Phoenix, right? Hmm. I, I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. Hmm. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You, you must wish to break your end of my agreement. No, that's not. That's enough. If that is your intention, then there is only one thing for me to do. Well, wait, please. Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. Hold it, Hold it mother fudger. N no, please. Not that. Please, wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this child to a speedy end and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... Hmm. Ah! What in the... Mr. Knight, are you... Ah. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there's a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up, Maya, she'll... Oh, the prosecution, I... What has come over everyone? Even you are. The prosecution rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. The prosecution rests with no further questions. Then, the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. Hmm. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. De Killer's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley De Killer's client is... Adrian Andrews. Hmm. Mr. Knight? Yes, Your Honor. By in the trial here, right now. Then your client, Matan God, would be declared innocent. In his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. M Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. Mm -hmm. The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matan God, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Oh my god, we're still going!
dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. Eh. But, at the least on the charge of murder, I would appear. It would appear you are innocent. Eh. Ha! Why would you flip the switch now? So, I guess even the old funny duddy figured me out. M Mr. Ungod? You were atrocious as a lawyer, weren't you? Giving your client away like this? That refreshing like a spring breeze crap is just as atrocious. Don't you agree? Uh... Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? <laughs> hmm. Did I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? But... But if I did that... Maya will die! But if I say he's innocent... Then Miss Andrews will be charged as the murderer! And Maya will be hella pissed! Do I say he's guilty? Or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end! It all hinges on what I choose! Now then, Mr. Knight! Let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. Ah. The person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews. And your client, Mr. Matt Ungard, is innocent. Who the hell comes to court with this, right? Freaking... These freaking... Wine glass brandy... Is, it's brandy in there, it's gotta be brandy. <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer's going to say what I want. Aren't you? Right? I can't. I can't do this. But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt Ungard, is... A guilty! Mm. 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 